Welcome to Victory in Europe, where we delve into the inspiring biographies of remarkable individuals who shaped history. Today, we're unraveling the incredible journey of Major Richard D. Winters, a true hero from World War II. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and make sure to hit subscribe and ring the bell to stay updated on our captivating explorations of World War II and beyond. Richard Winters was born on January 21, 1918 in Dallas, Texas to Becky and Anita Bath Winters. His family moved to Ephrata when he was eight and later to Lancaster. He initially earned money cutting grass and working at a grocery store. Later, he became a painter for Edison Electric Company. Volunteering for the Army in 1941 to avoid being drafted, he completed training at Camp Croft, South Carolina. After the U.S. entered World War II, discharge became impossible and he had to stay in the Army. He continued training with the Army. Winter's platoon leader was from ROTC and proved incompetent. He once lectured his platoon for an hour about the M1 Garand rifle while holding a Springfield. After that experience, Winters chose to attend Officers Candidate School at Fort Benning, Georgia, where he met his friend Louis Nixon. Graduating on June 2, 1942, he became a second lieutenant and chose to join the Airborne, training at Camp Tacoa, Georgia. Assigned to Easy Company, 506th PIR, 101st Airborne, he led 2nd Platoon under Captain Herbert Sobel's strict command. Meehan led Easy Company until the Normandy invasion, but tragedy struck around 1.15 a.m. on June 6, 1944, when the C-47 Sky train carrying the company headquarters was downed by German anti-aircraft fire, resulting in the loss of all aboard. Winters, parachuting that night and safely landing near St. Mary Glees, faced the challenge of having lost his weapon. Undeterred, he oriented himself, gathered paratroopers, including members of the 82nd Airborne Division, and moved towards the assigned objective near St. Marie du Mont. Unaware of Lieutenant Meehan's fate, Winters took on the role of acting commanding officer for the entire Normandy campaign. Later in the day, Winters orchestrated a daring attack, successfully eliminating a German battery of 105 mm howitzers, firing on the causeways, the primary exits from Utah Beach. Despite being outnumbered with an estimated 50 German defenders against his 13 men, Winters led the Brecourt Manor assault south of Le Grand Chemin. This feat, later studied at the U.S. Military Academy at West Point, serves as a notable example of assaulting a fortified position. Beyond neutralizing the battery, Winters acquired a crucial map detailing German gun emplacements in the Utah Beach area. In September 1944, the 506th PIR participated in Operation Market Garden, an airborne mission in the Netherlands. On October 5, 1944, a German force launched an attack on the flank of the 2nd Battalion, posing a threat to break through the American lines. Simultaneously, during an Easy Company patrol, four men were wounded. Upon returning to headquarters, they reported encountering a substantial group of Germans at a crossroads about 1,300 yards east of the company command post. Recognizing the gravity of the situation, Winters took one squad from the 1st platoon and proceeded towards the crossroads. There, they observed a German machine gun firing towards the south, targeting the battalion headquarters. After assessing the situation, Winters led the squad in an assault on the enemy machine gun crew. Following the successful capture of the position, the squad came under fire from a German position opposite them. Realizing it was likely held by at least a platoon, Winters called for reinforcements from the rest of the 1st platoon and led them in a subsequent assault. Later, it was revealed that there were at least 300 Germans in the area. On December 16, 1944, German forces initiated a counteroffensive against Western allies in Belgium. After the 101st Airborne was transported by truck to the Bastogne area on December 18, Winters, still serving as executive officer of the 2nd Battalion, participated in defending the line northeast of Bastogne near Foy in the Battle of the Bulge. The 101st Airborne and elements of the 10th Armored Division faced approximately 15 German divisions, along with heavy artillery and armor, for almost a week until the U.S. 3rd Army broke through the German lines around Bastogne. 
Winters was promoted to major and became the acting battalion commander as Lieutenant Colonel Strayer moved to the regimental staff. In early May, the 101st Airborne Division received orders to capture Berchtesgaden. The 2nd Battalion, passing through streams of surrendering German soldiers, reached the Alpine Retreat on May 5, 1945, and remained there when the war ended on May 8, 1945. Winters was recommended for the Medal of Honor at Brecourt Manor, but received the Distinguished Service Cross due to quotas. Post-war Winters worked for a friend, becoming a general manager. He married Ethel Estepe in 1948, pursued education through the GI Bill, and during the Korean War resigned before deployment. Major Richard D. Winters, an esteemed resident of Hershey, passed away on January 2, 2011, at an assisted living facility in Campbelltown. Confronting Parkinson's disease for several years, Major Winters requested a private and unannounced funeral service, a fitting tribute to his honorable character held on January 8, 2011. In homage to his enduring legacy, Major Winters finds his eternal rest at the Bergstrasse Evangelical Lutheran Church Cemetery in Ephrata, alongside his parents in the Winters family plot.